Martial arts are basically a weapon system, a stick fighting system and a knife fighting system. But there's actually a very comprehensive empty hand component. There's a boxing system, a kicking system, a trapping system, and a grappling system. And that's what we're going to cover here today. So let's get started. Okay, let's get into some of the kicking now. Now, there's different names for the kicking system. Some people call it Sikaran, some people call it Panjotman, but it's basically the kicking, the low line kicking in the Filipino martial arts. Now, the reason we kick low, we kick below the waist, is for two reasons. The one reason is when you kick low, you can use your empty hands at the same time as you're kicking. Or if you have a weapon, you can be using the knife and kicking the legs at the same time. The other reason is when you kick above the waist, it's much easier for your opponent to counter it. He can grab your leg, he can do a nerve destruction, some kind of a bone break. So that's why we like to keep these kicks very low. So let's get on with the kicking. Okay, now to give you a quick example of why we don't like to kick above the waist, I'd like to bring on the bank. In the Filipino arts, which is primarily a blade-oriented culture, somebody always has a knife. So when you kick above the waist, here's an idea of what can happen. This is the side kick against the knife. The round kick is the slash and cover, just like we did on the knife fighting tape, slash and cover. So when the round kick comes in, it's slashed. The side kick comes in, it's cut. So when you're dealing with that kind of an opponent, you don't want to kick above the waist. You want to keep your kicks low, kick to the legs. OK, in the Filipino martial arts, most of our empty hand fighting comes from the blade or the stick itself. So we're going to get into doing defenses against the two most common kicks of the side kick and the roundhouse kick. I'd like to bring out Vic. Now, these techniques transpose directly to the empty hand even though you don't have a knife. The knife in the reverse grip is usually an elbow since it's coming down at that same manner. So off the side kick, the first defense is the elbow. Bam. So when you're kicking up high, you're going to elbow right into the leg. All right, the next technique we can do is we're going to raise the knee straight up and hit the nerves on the inside of the shin. So when the side kick comes, he just raises his leg up. Okay, the third technique I'd like to give you of the side kick now is just going to be a pat in the head. So when I kick in at Vic, Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is some defenses against the roundhouse kick. The first one we're going to do is against the leg kick for someone trying to kick you in the thigh. Now, all Vic is going to do is he's going to pick his knee up and he's going to allow me to throw my shin basically as hard as I can into his knee. Now, when you point your knee and you feel that, you don't want to run your shin into something like that as hard as you could. That's like going up to a table leg and kicking it as hard as you could. So when I go to leg kick Vic, He's basically going to pick his knee up, and he's going to catch me in the shin. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is when the roundhouse comes in a little higher. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the same technique we did in the knife fighting tape as the slash and cover. Except instead of having a reverse grip knife, we're going to have the elbow. So it's going to be a slash and cover against my shin bone. So when I throw the roundhouse, now, you see how first he starts out using one elbow, he can use the other elbow. It doesn't matter. But when the kick comes in, he's going to clip the shin as hard as he could with the elbow. So, this is the reason why in the Filipino martial arts, we don't like to kick above the waist. We like to keep the kicks low to the legs, where they do the most damage and it's harder to counter them. Okay, the last defense against kicks I want to cover in this section is the spin kick. Now, we never ever spin kick. You never want to turn your back on your opponent. This is what happens. Let's bring out Vic. When I spin kick on Vic, basically that what happens. And it doesn't matter how fast you think you are, if you wait for the kick to come around, then you have to deal with it. But you want to stop hit the guy the minute he starts to spin. So, that's basically what you want to do. Do that one more time when I spin, and he stops me like that. Okay, first thing we're going to start to do is we're going to cover the low line kicks. Our first kick is the oblique kick. 
Now, you see I'm barefooted right now because we're just going to train barefooted just to train. We want to save uh, our opponent from a lot of unnecessary pain when we're training. You always want to have safety first when you're training these. But in reality, these kicks are all designed to do with the shoes on because it's the shoe and the sole of the shoe that's actually causing the pain, causing the damage when you hit your opponent in the legs. Now, in ancient times, they used to have small blades attached to their sandals. And when they kicked to the legs, they were actually doing cutting and destroying and pinpointing arteries and veins in the legs. So for the sake of training, you want to go barefoot. But remember, in the street, these kicks are great with shoes on. OK, let's get started on the oblique kick. <clears throat> we have two basic kinds of oblique kicks we're going to use. Let's bring on Vic. First oblique kick is the low one. It stays very low on the ground, and it kicks to the shin with the side of the shoe, just like that. Okay, so you basically out, it's a great opening move, you're out here in long range, and you just kick to the shin. Bam, like that. So a good way to practice it with your opponent, with your training partner, is to do this in threes. Kick, 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 kick. Okay, so when I come in with big, I go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, the next oblique kick we'd like to do is the higher kick. It's a stomping type of a kick. We'll bring it big. Okay, this kick looks like that. Now, it's the same rear leg oblique, but we're stomping down right above the knee, right into the thigh muscle, just like that. Bam. Now, a little later, we'll cover how we can use these kicks when the punches are coming in, but let's just isolate them right now. So, there's the rear leg oblique in threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, we can mix these up, and we can work three of the low ones and three of the high ones. So we go one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, the next kick I'd like to give you is the round kick to the inner shin. This is another low line kick. It's a great opening move, but it causes a lot of pain. So let's bring out Vic. When we do this kick, we're using the front leg, and we shuffle in, and we kick the shin right under the knee. Bam, just like that. Now, you can take this kick. You can do it in threes like you did with the other kicks. Then you can start to do them in combination. So we're starting off, I go here, and an oblique kick. I do the shin kick and the oblique kick. I can do an oblique and then a shin, or I go oblique, shin, shin. I go one, two, three, or I go one, two, three, four. So we can mix these up. We can just work coming in on the opponent from long range, just working the legs. Okay, next kick I'm going to give you is we're using the heel of the foot, and we're going to hit him right outside his calf or in his knee. Let's bring it back. So this kick here comes like that either on the calf, inside the knee. So again, with the combinations, we can go one, two, three, four. We can go one, two, three, four. And you can mix them up any way you want, but these are all the low-line destructive kicks to the legs. OK, now I want to get into some counters to these low-line kicks. Now, as good as these low kicks are, they're very destructive, they're great opening moves, but in the Filipino martial arts, everything has a counter to it. Nothing is foolproof. So we're going to start out with the oblique kick. We'll bring him back. He throws the oblique kick, bam, to the shin, just like that. Now, the first counter is when I feel him throw the kick, I'm going to pick up my leg, I'm going to give him my knee. He's going to end up throwing his shin as hard as he tries to hit me into my knee. And we remember how painful that is, that you don't want to throw your shin into that. So when he throws the oblique kick, I pick up my leg. Bam. So this is the first counter to the oblique, is picking up your knee and letting him kick your knee with his shin. Okay. Here's another technique, another counter to the oblique kick. This one isn't so much as destruction, as it's going to set him off balance. And we can usually do some type of a sweep or a throw following it. But we're just going to do this counter right now. Let's bring on Vic. When Vic throws the oblique kick, what I do is I pick up my leg and I catch it like that. 
Okay, so basically, whenever these low kicks come in, you can pretty much defend yourself against any of them just by raising a knee up in the way. So we're not going to cover all of them, but you can practice at home and realize you can just put your knee in anytime that low kick comes in. So now we're going to start to get into the boxing. Now, the boxing is commonly referred to as panantukin, and the Filipino boxing system is a little different than Western boxing, although the punches are the same, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, except we use a lot of arm destructions, nerve destructions, and bone breaks when we enter and when we hit. So let's bring on Vic. First thing we do is when the jab comes in, is we're going to use our knuckles, and we're going to hit right here on the inside of the wrist. Bam. Just like that. So this is our first strike, is to hit the nerves on the inside of the wrist off of the jab. Okay, good. Now the second thing we're going to do is instead of hitting here on the nerves, we're going to hit here on the bicep. So remember, you're always keeping your rear hand up. When the jab comes in, you're just punching it at the bicep. Now, the beauty of this strike is, no matter how fast he throws the jab at, is no matter how fast that this punch goes, his bicep is pretty much stationary. His shoulder's not going anywhere, and the bicep isn't going where. It's only the fist that's going fast. So when he throws that in, no matter how fast it goes, I can reach right in and punch him in the bicep. The next thing we're going to do is now we're going to use the destruction with the rear hand. We're going to take the knuckles of his hand and we're going to smash him on the bones of his fist. Now you do this right you can break the guy's fist. It's a great way of entering in. So when it comes in, boom, just like that. So we're punching the bones on the top of the hand. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a destruction just like the strike to the bicep. We're going to do this going upwards. So when he comes in, we hit underneath just like that. So now that we have those down, let's do these in combination. When Vic comes in, I can go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So what I'm doing is I'm punching the inside of the wrist and I'm punching the top of the hand basically at the same time. One time, boom, boom, boom. Okay, now we're going to start to get into the rear hand. He gives me the front hand. I hit to the nerves. I'm going to use the same hand and throw a backhand strike to his other arm. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, instead of hitting to the wrist, I can hit to the biceps. So now I'm hitting both biceps. I go one, two, one, two, one, two. I go one, two, one, two, one, two. Now I can take the knuckle strike that we did here, and I can do it with this hand. So when it comes in, I go one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Okay, these next couple of destructions I'm going to give you are elbow destructions. Now these come directly from the knife. These are like having the knife in the reverse grip. So remember, whenever we're using an elbow technique, it's coming from the knife in the reverse grip in this kind of a motion, this kind of a motion like that. So let's bring out Vic. When he comes in with the jab, that's what we want to do. We want to use the elbow coming right up on the fist. Okay? Now we can also use the elbow coming horizontally and we're hitting it like that. One, two, one, two, one, two. So now when we work the jab cross, we can go one, two, elbow, hit, elbow, hit, elbow, hit. So that's another thing to mix up. Now let's get into the hook punch. When the hook punch comes in, what we're going to do basically is when he hooks, we're going to make a straight line and we're going to blast him either in the bicep or in the shoulder. So when the hook comes, we're just going to hit. Bam. For the sake of training, I'm going to use my open hand. So when he comes in, we're just going to hit the bicep. Blast. Remember, this is either a punch to the bicep or a punch to the deltoid. So we just work that. One, two, 
three. So now we start to work a jab cross hook combination. He's going to come and jab one, two, three. 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 Now you can take all the destructions we did, use them in any order, mix it up, and really get a good practice routine. Okay, now that we got that down, in the beginning of the tape I said that we use the low line kicking because we can use it in conjunction with the empty hands. So now we're going to start to use the low line kicks in conjunction with the empty hands. So we bring out there. When the jab comes in, bam, there's my shin kick. Like that. So I parry and I kick. Now, if I can parry and kick, I can do destruction and kick at the same time. Bam. 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 Just like that. Okay, you get the idea. Now we're going to start to use the kicks with the hands going in combination. So real slowly, first we're going to do is off a jab cross. We're going to go jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross. Okay, now that we have that down, we're going to start to do some combo training. Except now we're going to throw in the combo to follow up of a jab cross hook. Okay, that's all we're going to do is a jab cross hook and we're going to use that as a follow up. So we bring in Vic. When Vic comes in with the jab, I hit and I go one, two, three. One more time. Bam! One, two, three. Bam! One, two, three. Now we can do this off of the jab cross. I go one, two. Boom, boom, boom. Jab cross. One, two, three. Jab cross. One, two, three. Jab cross, one, two, three. Okay, one of the things we can do is we can use all these destructions to the limbs offensively. We can use them on him before he even throws a shot. Now these are going to come directly from the knife fight. If you had a blade in your hand, you're not necessarily waiting for him to come in before you attack. So we bring in Vic. When you're standing there and your opponent's got his hands up, you go one, two, three. And you can work boom, 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 boom. Pop, pop. And you can just work. Work the limbs like that. We can kick and go pop, 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 boom. So this is the way of entering in. Guy's got his hands up. He's covering the face. One, pop, pop, and we can hit to the limbs like that with the jab cross right in. Boom, 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 boom. You can practice with your partner just standing out there, working, hitting the limbs. Okay, good. Now that we got that down, we're going to move into trapping range now. Now, let's get into what trapping is and what it isn't. Trapping is a range. Most people think when they say trapping that it's a couple of techniques of removing obstructions or doing a pox out, lop out. That's not what trapping range is. Trapping is a range unto itself. It differentiates mid-range in boxing and grappling range. If you can't fight in trapping range, you're going to get grabbed, you're going to end up on the ground. Trapping range is when you have an animal and you're trapping an animal in the woods and he's stuck in a little cage. Can't go forward, can't go backward, and he can't go side to side. That's what trapping range is. Now, in long range, all you have is kicking. In mid range, you have boxing, you have some kicking. In trapping range, you have elbows, you have knees, you have headbutts, you have eye gouges, you have low kicks, you have grabs, and there's a lot of locks you can do. If you can't function in trapping range, when you clash in boxing range, it's going to look like a heavyweight boxing match, and you're just going to grapple, and you're going to end up getting locked. So what we want to do is we want to function in this range. We want to be able to keep the guy, like I said, it's a buffer zone. We want to keep him from boxing before he can grab us. We want to be able to fight in that nose-to-nose -nose range. So, let's bring out Vic. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on trapping the lead arm. We're going to trap the lead arm, we're going to throw in a backhand. This is our entry into trapping range. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can trap offensively or defensively. When I'm facing off against my opponent, I can come in with a kick and then come in and trap in. 
or he can come in with that jab and I can hit it and then trap in. So these are the two ways we can enter. To keep it simple, I'm just going to enter in on him for now so we can get these techniques. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to low kick in, I'm going to trap, I'm going to elbow, I'm going to backhand, and I'm going to elbow. So we're just going to do a quick combination of one, two, three, four, all with the same arm. So I'm going to kick, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to elbow. Now, when I come in, I can put the elbow here into the arm, I can chop to the head, and I can put the elbow in the chest. I go one, two, three, four, I can elbow up this way. So I go one, two, three, four, and like that. So that's our first combination. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do that trapping combination, and then I'm going to do some follow-ups. So we bring him back. I'm going to kick, I'm going to enter in, I'm going to elbow, I'm going to backhand, I'm going to elbow, and then I'm going to go jab, cross, hook. So we do that one more time. I go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. One more time, I go kick, backhand, elbow, backhand, elbow, and I can come in with an elbow. I go one, two, three, four, five, and then elbow. Okay, now to bring out a point, I'm going to show you something with the double sticks real quick, and I'm going to show you how the Sinawali pattern translates to the empty hand. Your basic heaven six pattern is we go forehand, backhand, backhand, forehand, backhand, backhand. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a forehand, backhand, backhand, a forehand, a backhand, and a backhand. So we're going to take the same Sinawali pattern and we're going to do this empty hands. Okay, so now we're going to work this Sinawali pattern empty hand. I enter in, I go backhand, elbow, backhand, elbow, backhand, backhand. So what we're doing is, there's the backhand, there's the forehand, there's the backhand, there's another backhand. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more time, we come into the enter, elbow, backhand, elbow, backhand, backhand. I can mix these up, one, two, three, one, two, three. I kick and I enter, boom, 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 boom. When he comes in with the punch, I can hit, elbow, hit, elbow, belt, boom. One more time, boom, just like that. Off the destruction, it's hit and hit, elbow backhand, kick, boom, boom, boom. Okay, now we're going to get into obstacle removal or obstruction removal. This is kind of what everybody thinks that trapping is all about, but this is just a small piece of what it's about. When I enter in with the low kick and I come in, he's going to block that shot. Now, it could be accidental, it could be incidental, but he just got that hand up. What we do is I'm going to reach over and I'm going to re-hit. I'm going to elbow, backhand, backhand. So one more time, I kick, I come in, I hit, elbow, backhand, backhand. Do that one more time, I come in, I hit, I'm blocked, so I go one, two, three, four. Now from here we can get into the sweeping, the locking, the throwing, but we're going to do that a little later. Okay, what I want to cover right now real quick is a really good tool we use in trapping range, and this is the headbutt. Now, before I show you the headbutt, I want to explain a lot of people have a misconception about the headbutt. They think that you're taking your forehead and smashing the guy in the face with that, and that's no good. The forehead is real sensitive, it cuts real easy, you're going to split your own head open and have blood pouring down your face. We want to use the top of our head where it's really hard. Now, in Kali, what makes the headbutt so effective is we use it at different angles. We use it in cutting motion. So, we bring on Vic. When he comes in with a punch, and I just hit and I come in here like this. I can thumb the eyes, I can hit butt that way, I can hit butt, I can come in down. I can go elbow, elbow, I can go one, two, three, I can go one, two, three that way. I can hit the head in any number of ways once I come in here and clinch. So that's how we had used the head butt. Okay, so here's an example of where we can trap into the head butting. When he comes in, I hit. I wedge, I come in, I thumb the eye, I elbow, I headbutt, 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 headbutt. I can throw in the knee, I can come in with another one, I can throw in another headbutt. So do that one more time when he comes in, boom, 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 I come in, I thumb the eye, I elbow, and I headbutt. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do for an entry is the vertical gun tank. When Vic comes in, I'm going to parry, I'm going to raise, I'm going to smack, and I'm going to hit. So one more time, I go one, two, three, just like that. I can kind of clip that as I come in. 
I can hit that in the arm as I come in. But this is the vertical gun to carry, raise, smack, and hit. So when I have this entry down, I can kick, I can elbow, and then I can come back in. One, two, three. All right, let's do that one more time. When he comes in, I parry, raise, I hit. Or I parry, raise, I elbow, I hit, chop, chop. One more time. Boom, 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 boom. I can hit. Okay, now that we got that down, let's start to make our way into grappling range. Now, a favorite technique we have in Kali is the arm wrench. It takes absolutely no effort at all to pop the elbow on somebody's arm and wrench their arm out. So, let's bring on Vic. When he comes with the jab, I vertical gun to him. I elbow, I backhand, and then I shift my body in, and I use my body weight to wrench his arm. So do that one more time. I go one, two, three, and I just shift right into it. Do that one more time. Hit, elbow, and then wrench. Okay, now that you got that down, the next technique we're going to do is our arm bar. Now, a lot of people do this type of an arm bar with their palm, and they do it like that. Kali, we want to use the forearm because we want to dig the bones of our forearm right into the tricep above the elbow. So this is the most effective way of doing this type of lock. So when Vic comes in, I vertical gunting, I hit, I elbow, and then I come in like this, and I can bring him down. Now I can take him down all the way, or I can just kind of hold him here. Do that one more time. I hit, I elbow, and then I come up, and I can bring him down. We'll do that one more time. Vertical gunting, elbow, hit, and then arm wrench. Take him down like this. Okay, here's another lock we can do off the punch. This time the vertical gun thing is going to be a little different. Before, we went parry, raise, smack, and we hit with the right hand. Now we're going to go parry, raise, and we're going to hit with the left hand. So we're going to go into our figure four from here. When he comes in, I hit, and then I come around like this. We can take him all the way down the ground, which we'll do in the grappling section of the DVD. One more time, I parry, raise, I hit, and I go into the figure four. Okay, now these two locks we did previously, when he comes in with the punch, and we have the arm bar here, and the second one, when we have the figure four, these are all working from the outside of the opponent. We're going to start to do what we call an inside insertion, which is where we did the arm wrench, and we're going to do some locks and takedowns from this inside position. So when Vic comes in with the punch, I vertical good take, I elbow, and I wrench. Now, I can punch up to the face from here, I can smack down to the groin. What I want to do is I want to come behind the head, and this is my first lock. And I throw the knee in from here. So this is step one in the series we're going to do. Okay, now step two, what we're going to do is I come in, I'm here, my arm wrench, bring him down like this, and then throw that arm behind my back, and I have him in this position here. From here to take him down, all I'm going to do is just push his head down. And he comes down and we're going to be in this position here. Now from here, I can throw this leg over. I can have him up here like this. I can put this leg in the spine and put his head under that way using what we call branch up like this. Okay, let's do this again. When he comes in with the punch, I'm here, I arm wrench. I throw in the knee, I tuck the arm, I take him in. This is the first position here. My foot over his chest, I have what we call branch up. Second position is I switch this and I take this. Now, once you have your opponent here in this position, this is a good submission here, I'm gonna go prone, I'm gonna fall down on my back. And I'm gonna have him here like this. And we can choke him out with our feet. We can wrench on the arm. This is a really good submission like this. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into that same series we did before, but we're going to add some of the little counters to it. When Vic comes in with the punch, and I enter in, when I have him down here like this, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to struggle to get his way up. So I can't hold him down. He's struggling his way up. I'm going to push his hand behind his head. I'm going to come around, and I'm going to take him down like that. Okay, let's do that one more time. 
I enter in, I push down here, but now he's shoving up, so I push his hand, I take him like this, and I bring him down. Okay, now, before we get to the next counter, the beauty of these Filipino martial arts is, as opposed to jiu-jitsu and judo and a lot of those other throwing arts where when you get thrown, you can pat out, kind of protect yourself, all of these takedowns are designed to cripple or maim somebody. There's no way you can slap out. You're always going down in a very awkward way, landing on your head, landing on your back somehow. It's very hard to do a break fall like you're used to in other arts. So you have to really be careful when you train these. Okay, when Vic comes in, I arm wrench, I come down here. When he starts to struggle up, I come around but his other hand comes down like that. So I take him this way, and then I just take him down, but I take him down real gentle. Okay, let's break this one down a little slower. When he comes in, and I do my entry, and I come in here, when I'm pushing him down, when he starts to straighten up, his arm is moving. So I bring it all the way down, and I take him like this. Then I just put my hand behind his head, and I take him down. We all know what it would be like in reality, but when we train, we take them down real gently. Okay, here's the next thing we're going to do, keeping in mind that we're working that inside insertion. When Vic comes in with the punch, I vertical gun ting, I hit, I do my arm wrench. Before I can hit up here, he throws the other punch at me, he tries to hit. So I power up that, and I scoop him just like this. I use my hand to take him down by the forehead. And like you can see, these throws were designed that he can't break fall, he can't tap out, he's just going down, he's going down hard. One more time, I come in, I hit, I arm wrench, he throws the punch, I pull this up, and I take him down. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to start to do some takedowns and some locks from that outside position. Now that we just covered the inside insertion, we're going to work the outside. So when Vic comes in, I vertical good take, and I have him where we were before. We go into the arm bar, we take it all the way down, and we just kind of turn it here like this, using this as the submission. Bending his arm up like that, okay? We can strike to the back, but we want to dislocate the shoulder. We want to do this lock from in here like this. Okay, one more time. I hit, take him down, and I just turn my body around. Okay, another thing we can do from the outside position, is we vertical gun tank, we put on the arm bar, and we just put that in there. We take them down like this. Now from in here like this, I can throw my leg over, and I can do this hands free. I can come around here, I can sit on his back, I can come back in here like this, I can hold him down this way. So, I can turn this way, I can turn this way, just sitting on him, we take this hand, I put it on his head, Here's the arm bar in here like this. Okay, let's do that one more time. When he comes in with the jab, I have my arm bar, I take him down, I bend that in there like that, and I take him down. From here, I throw my leg over, I have the arm braced in here against my leg, can't go anywhere. I can sit up here on his back, still keeping the lock. I come back to this way. Push down, sitting on his back, using the arm bar. I put that hand behind my head. The more I reach behind my head, the more it hurts. So here's the less pressure. When I go here, there's more pressure. Like I said, we can do the turning. I can put my hand this way. I come back in here this way, sitting up on him. Okay, continuing with working from the outside. Now we're going to get into the figure four. We're going to go down the ground. and we're going to go through a whole series of transitions we can do from the figure four. So when Vic comes in with the punch, I vertical gunting, I hit, I get into my arm bar, I crack him under here, and I go into the figure four, we go down on the ground. First thing we want to do is want to stretch the figure four out, we want to put pressure on the shoulder, like that. After you have the figure four down, first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert that under our legs like this. We're going to take our tricep. And we do a neck stretch like that. Okay? Second thing we do is we put the hand under the head. And we do another neck stretch like that. Next thing we can do from here is we can take our hands, take the back of the head, 
you pull the head in and you dig your elbows into his chest. Just like that. So this is the first series here like this. Now, let's come back into this. When I have him in the figure four here, first thing we did is we put it under the leg. What we're going to do is we're going to take the figure four like this. And I'm going to take it this way with this hand. Now I can do a neck crank and I can pull him out like that. Okay, here we are in the figure four. We have him like this. Now, what you have to do is you have to keep your head down when you're doing these, okay? When I come in here like this, before I can do any of these other techniques, if he tries to push my head away, see now he can get me down like that, so I have to catch that hand and then take it like that, and now I have both hands. I can use my free hand to choke him out from here. So we'll do that one more time. I have him here in the figure four. I capture his arm so I could do something like that. And I take him and I stretch him out this way. And now I can choke from in here. Okay, so getting back to the counter. When I have the figure four here, I tuck this under here, I have this like this. Before I can do anything, he's gonna push my chin. And I'm gonna take it like this and I'm gonna lock him. But his counter is when I'm here like this, when he pushes my chin, if I don't get to that lock fast enough, he goes into the leg scissor like that. So we'll do that one more time. Have him here in figure four. Want my hand free so I capture that, so I can take that. And now he has me like this. Okay, here's another transition we can make from here in the figure four. We stretch this out, we have the figure four here like this. We got our head down because we don't want to be trapped. We put his hand on the floor. Now we have a wrist lock and the figure four. We're using the floor as a third arm to maintain his wrist. I come up and I sit on that like that. Now I have the figure four, I'm pushing his hand down. Now from here I'm going to scoot up on my knees, I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to roll it around back this way. And now we're kind of in one of the positions we had earlier, where I can take it like this, I can be in here like this. From here, we come back in like this. Now we're doing the lock on this side. I scoot back up on my knees, and I flip them back around to here. Do that one more time. I come up. And I flip them around this way. Now you see here I can take my leg and I can do the wrist lock on his hand like that. Come back. Around his hand like this. Then we flip him around here like this. Go back in here. Okay, from here, I can reach over and take his leg like this. I can do the double elbows. I can take his head. I can hold him in here like this. Now, pen jacks a lot. They have what they call the trophy position. I'll show you that real quick. Once we have him in here like this, I reach over and take that. I put that behind my head. Now I can take this and I can squeeze. So one more time, we have him in here in this position like this. Reach over and take the leg. Put that behind your head. And now we can just squeeze the whole body out. Okay, here's another little series we can do off the figure four. When Vic comes in and I hit, do the figure four and take him down here like this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here in this position like this with the arm bar. Now. I can have him in here like this. I can come back and do the straight arm bar. So what should we do now? I have his wrist here like this. I start to turn it clockwise. Now you see as I turn the wrist, it picks his head up. Now I have him in here like this. I have my foot choking him and I have the wrist crank. But I'm gonna keep turning it and I'm gonna keep scooting my body down. Now I have the choke out and the wrist lock. I can put my foot behind his head and I can choke him out from here while I'm doing the wrist lock. 
Okay, again, starting from the figure four, we just brought him down. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fall like this. I have him in a straight arm bar, and I have my foot in his chin. I can re-bend the wrist, come in here like this, or I come back down to the straight arm bar. Now, I'm going to take the top of my foot and put it in his neck. Now that I have that placed, I'm going to turn the wrist. Turn the wrist, and I have him up here in this position like this. From this position, I can break his arm with my leg, and I can choke him out. I can come in here like this, or I can continue to bring him all the way down. Now to choke him out from here, see how my leg is bent, all I have to do is straighten out my leg. I would just kick it out straight, and I can come behind here. Now, for all intents and purposes, I can do this with my hands free, or I can keep the wrist locked. Okay, one more time. We're back here in figure four. I scoot down like this. Come out here like this. We start to turn this around. You see how I'm holding them up here like that? I can do the lock holding them up. I can put my foot behind the head. And we can bring them down, choking them out with a foot in his throat laying on the back of his head, and the arm lock. Okay, now that we made it this far, the last thing I'd like to do for you guys is we're going to do some locks and takedowns and submissions off of the kicks. So, let's bring out Vic. First thing we're going to do is off of the roundhouse kick. Now, there's a lot of different things we can do off of the kicks, so uh, we're going to start out with this one. When the roundhouse kick comes, we're going to catch it and we're going to elbow. We're going to throw him over and put our leg in there. Now, the different ways we can cause the pain is we have the heel here like this. So we can just turn the heel forward like that. That's the first thing. Second thing is I can turn this way. We can turn that like that. Turn like that. I come over, I have him like this. I can take the other leg, and I crank his leg like that, having the two of them. Do that one again, the kick comes in, we do the destruction, take him down, come over, give him a little crank this way, turn around like this, and just come in here this way. And now I'm using my leg as a brace, and I can do the other leg. If I want to really put the pressure, I can just sit down as I'm doing that. Okay, one more time, we hit. Come over, take him down like this. We have the double lock. So like that. Okay, so let's get into detail here. We have him in the lock here like this. I'm going to start to turn. So I turn around this way. Now I'll come up over him. Very painful, so you've got to be real careful when you train this. I grab his little leg. And I can come in here like that. So we still have this leg in here. We come back in here like this. Using my bicep now to push that like that. I can reach over and take his other hand. I can do a lot with this hand. I can push it behind and kind of hold it in here like this. Now I can put that hand on his back and sit on it. Okay, now we're going to do some takedowns off the round kick going the other way. You notice this first time we were stepping over, going to the outside behind his back. Now he's going to be on his back. We're going to be stepping over the other way across his stomach. So when Vic comes in with the round kick, first thing we do is we catch it. The first time we came underneath it like that, now we're coming under it this way. So do that one more time. When he comes in, I come under it and I hit. Take my hand under the knee. I push it down. Now I'm putting pressure on his leg with that hand and I'm lifting up like this. First switch from here is we lift up like this. We take the right hand and we put down. Right hand, the forearm, is going into the nerves behind the calf and we lift up like that. After we do this, we're going to take the right leg and we're going to step over like this. The more I straighten up, 
the more it hurts. So I'm bent over now just to spare him the pain, but I want to stand up straight. I can come all the way up like this, and I can start to turn back around that way, putting the pressure on his leg. Okay, guys, the last thing we're going to do is countering the side kick. Now, countering the side kick is going to be a combination of the first two things we already did, and I'll show you now. When Vic comes in with the side kick, I come in and I hit. I either come around that way, take him down like this like we did before, and step over this way, and I go like that, and I go like that. Let's do that one more time. Okay, so off the sidekick, when he comes in, I hit, I scoop it this way, we take him down, I have the lock here like this, I step over like this, and I come over like this. Okay, so the first thing we do off the sidekick was capturing it with the one hand, now we're going to capture it with the other hand. When he comes with the sidekick, and I hit, come under this way, and we come right back into this whole series we did before. You come under like this, come under, turn around this way, press him in there, take his other leg in here like this. Okay, one last time when he comes in, I hit, I come under, I take him down, I step over the top, come in here like that so he can stay straight, and I come in here 